go into the code and to write you some code to do something. The trouble is, that code may not be relevant in three months time, six months time. So you don't want hard-coded software. What you want is a system with a lot of configuration in, and that's the way we put the system. And I think that's why a lot of our customers find it very useful, particularly in the current economic order, recent economic climate, mergers, acquisitions, divestitures, you know, everything's been going on. So HR are forever trying to run around to catch up. And it's all, in HR speak, it's all about you know, every, everybody's cost centre is changing. This cost centre is moving to this one. We're merging these two departments. We're getting rid of that sub part of the organisation. That's being outsourced to some of this. They have to keep up to date with all of this. Now, if they had to do that with hard coding in the system, as a lot of it, it's very difficult and it's very expensive. We deliberately design the systems to make it as easy as possible. Yeah, I think the question about M and E's, right? Yeah, because because uh, <laughs> yeah, I was just just discussing her that mm. a company nowadays has a lot of M and E's. So yeah. if you implement this system, the other company may have a different. So you have to start everything all over again. There's a lot of yeah. uh, okay. legacy uh, way of doing things, mm. and how do you actually, uh, you know, uh, converge that to to a single objective? Well, it's I think it touches on a couple of points that I had mentioned earlier. Um, I'm talking with companies now that are, that are going through M&As and the reverse of M&As, the, the vestiges of different companies. Um, and if they're using the same systems, we like it when they're using our PeopleSoft system. We have a concept called the set ID. It sounds very technical, but, but effectively what it allows us to do is to run individual discrete companies within the one system. And so they, they effectively exist on, in their own right. So it doesn't affect payrolls, it doesn't affect um, performance evaluation, it's just its own company, the whole security is locked around that. However, if I was a CEO, I would be able to look at analytics and data and reports across the entire group. Um, now where we have companies that are using different systems, maybe legacy systems, maybe systems from other vendors, um, again, the flexibility and the adaptability of our PeopleSoft system, we have found, typically makes that system become the master because it's easier to get data from other systems into PeopleSoft system and to manipulate it there. Because of that, I talked about, you know, that all the, the enhancements we've built in is to make it adaptable. I mean, a divestiture or a merger is actually the ultimate in, you know, change, right? And so, if you have a system that's difficult to change versus one that's easy to change, you're going to gravitate towards the system that's easy to change to make that your system of choice. Uh, and that's, that's what we're seeing in a number of cases that are ongoing uh, at the moment. It also touches on what I talked about, about uh, business intelligence, OBIE and OBIA, um, around being able to aggregate data from other data sources and then present them via dashboards to make informed decisions. Because typically with you know, mergers, divestitures, it's, well, how many people are in company A and how many are in company B? How many are going to be going? How many are going to be staying? What's the skill sets of the company that I'm just acquiring? How does that match to my current skill sets? So, so everybody does your, your forced ranking matches and all of these things that are going on. But you can't do that without information. And normally it's, okay, extract, extract, dump it in Excel or something else. <laughs> Let me try to do some analysis on it. But if you've got something that's a little bit cleverer, like the Oracle Business Intelligence that we have, then we can take that data, you know, five-star schemas into data warehouses, then apply that with the business logic that, that we have in OBIA to provide analytics based on data that's not only in our system, but it's in other systems as well. Okay. So, so just now, earlier you mentioned about profiles, right? Mm -hmm. So typically, um, everyone have to go through the profile uh, uh, process is that is that correct? You don't have to. And okay. this is another plus point of, of our HR systems. We don't actually force you to do anything. Um, people, and another thing about profile or different to profiles, but in a similar vein, um, would be some people have an authorized establishment, so positions, and you, the concept of position management within HR. So a position exists whether somebody's in that position or, or not. We don't force people to maintain positions. We give you the option to maintain full position management so you can create your entire establishment, partial position management so you can create it for parts of the organisation, or indeed none at all. And you can just have individuals in the system and an individual has a job. 
Yes, in the greater scheme of things, that job is a position. But if you choose not to map out your position architecturally, you don't have to. Similarly with profiles. An individual can have a set of associated competencies, skills, experiences, etc. associated with that individual. You don't have to create an entire profile. Actually, it's very simple to do because it's just an aggregation of the data you want in the first place. So you know, we, we, we see a lot of people finding a lot of value in doing this. Because uh, profiles is something we introduced in the previous release, but we just enhanced it in the latest release. Um, so we see a lot of people creating these profiles and they see a lot of value in it. Because it's something that you do naturally, and then historically you would have had to pull together through a series of separate computer-related or manual tasks, checking their competencies, checking their skills, checking their job aspirations. Now, if we've got skills, we've got competencies, we've got job aspirations, we just create, very simply, just by linking them together, a profile. So I now only have to deal with a profile, not various sets of discrete data. And I think that's a big plus for people moving forward. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. questions. Uh, what questions from Gigi? <laughs> because we were talking, we had a yeah, long chat. Talk. That's okay. Yeah, we had a long chat uh, over coffee. Um, I think all you wanted to, you wanted, ah, uh, you want wanted to know about the background which you have gone through already. That's mm -hmm. great. HR analytics applying it to the Asian mm -hmm. markets, um, and then the, um, the study. You wanted to know about the study, right? Uh, whether it's uh, apart from US, are there any yeah, other markets? Has already been shared the uh, Philippine. Uh, yep. Yeah, company, exactly. right? Yeah, okay, yeah which is also a huge uh, MNC that has various. Uh, I, I use that. As a, I think I use that as an example because it's very easy to use an art like you know we could use General Motors out of the US or we could use Hong Kong Shanghai Bank out of the UK. I know it's called Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, but the way those companies are run are maybe a little bit different to the way that some Asian companies are run. And if we take the Ayala as a good example again, because of its diversity, because of its size, and because of the fact that it is a very Asian company, and and it's still finding immense value. In, in operating this way. And it's a good combination because it's the technology, it's the flexibility, it's the shared services model. It, 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 it actually embodies a lot of what is right in HR technology management at the moment. One other thing that you did ask, and I haven't addressed it yet, and I'll just say one thing about it, the future. Yep. Yeah. Where, where's HR going in the future? Now, my crystal ball gazing isn't that good, but um, just say something that we've just started to release now. and. Um, may be of interest. I have this iPhone. Sure. Latest release of PeopleSoft, for example, has a module called iReceipts, which integrates this technology to the latest version. So I'm having a business lunch. I bring up my iReceipts app on here. I tap in a few points. I take a photograph of the receipt. Mm. I hit send. It then sends everything securely through to my expenses module, and it's managed in our receipts. Now I think we're going to start to see more of this type of technology coming along. Actually, just now uh, I wanted to ask on uh, mm. enterprise mobility, right? This, yeah. this for under that, that, that's that's an example of it. I think another area that HR will will start to make more use of, whatever you want to call them, RFID tags. Sure. Yeah. Where are people? This is all, we all have about rostering and shed. Now this is about how you. Brand it, isn't it? You know, if you say you're going to inject an RFID tag into somebody, they're not happy. But if you give them a free cell phone, and it's got one built in, they're quite happy with it. Um, but absence management, scheduling, rostering, retail organisations, medical organisations, you know, where are people? Um, say you take hard, the semiconductor or the hard disk manufacturing industry. Very often they pay people, you know, when are they sitting down at a bench doing something? Yeah? And that's now done with lots of plot carding and you know, biometric devices. If you've got an RFID tag, you know exactly where somebody is and what they're doing. You know, I may be looking five or ten years out, but perhaps a better use of that in terms of HR is something that we may be seeing in the future. They're just two, two examples. Anything else would be you know, just guessing. But, uh,